Hello and welcome to the Z-Hut. I'm Jay and today we're going to take a look at how to convert an old desk lamp or there could be other lamps that this would work with as well. From uh, this particular one was a fluorescent but we're going to convert it from this fluorescent tube to a COB LED which is even more efficient than these. And another nice thing with these you had to push the button down here hold it for a few moments and then let go and then sometimes it would start sometimes it wouldn't this one you just push the button and it turns on just like that all right so the first thing we're going to need to do is you want to gut all of the old electronics and here is a picture a couple pictures actually of what it should look like when you're done now, the one thing you are going to want to save is the switch. I did remove it, as you can see in the picture, but that was to clean it up and make it easier to solder the wires to. But uh, as you can see here, we did reuse that switch. And all you'll have to do is use a voltmeter with continuity and check and find out which two terminals on there, because every switch is going to be slightly different. You're just going to need to find out which two terminals are on and off. The other ones are used for the push button when you hold it down and then let go it generates an arc by doing that here's the electronics i removed there's the transformer the, the starter for it there's the brackets for the tube and i held on all this in case no nope i guess it would help to put it in view here i did hold on everything in case in the future i decided i wanted to use it on something else but you just remove all of that and let me set this stuff out of the way. You remove it all. And like I said, figure your switch out. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Now what you do is this is a 12 volt, um, what was it, a 4 watt COB LED. And you can see I'm touching it. It doesn't get that hot because it's only 12 volt. Now I went with this one. This was actually, these you get, they're for replacing the dome light in your vehicle. And the 12 volt means it's not going to get hot and it's not going to be super over brightening. If you use those 110 volt ones, like I in a previous video I've done for uh, converting the old halogen work lights over to uh, LED, that you'd have to put a heat sink on here. And when you turned it on, you'd be needing to wear sunglasses. The reflection off the paperwork in the de desk would just be insane. On the back side of the COB, the LED, uh, it's peel and stick, so you just peel that off, stick it on, and then I just reused the old wires that ran through the neck. There was four wires. I took two of them out and just left the white and black one and soldered them to the terminals and ran it through. I'm going to disconnect the power supply here so we can tip it up. Now, um, before I go any further, if try it out first before you stick it on there. For me, I found that the one was plenty of light. If it's not quite enough, you could run two. Just space them in here. Um, and surprisingly, even with just this one, it does radiate a nice pattern, so it works out great. But uh, I found one would work. You could go with two. I, I would not recommend putting three on. And oh, another benefit of these being 12 volt and they're for your vehicle's dome light, they're dimmable. You could actually put a potentiometer on the lamp as well and be able to turn the brightness down. So maybe if you did want to go with two, and then you could use the potentiometer to control the brightness. That's an option that'll leave up to you if you want to put it on. And I'll just open the bottom up here real quick and show you the wiring inside. So I'll go ahead and speed this up. All right, I've got the screws out. Now we just need to get that bottom plate to come off. <laughs> There we go. Now, as you can see, it's pretty simple in there. Um, I actually put some tape over the switch just, just to make sure nothing touched, but um, it, it shouldn't anyway. And on my switch, it was this terminal here and this, yeah, it was this terminal here and this one to the side was for off and on. And the other two had to deal with giving it the, the starter, the extra jolt of electricity to start the fluorescent bulbs which we don't need. That tape just helps uh, so that nothing grounds out. 
Now for the power connection, because we're using 12 volts, um, let me actually grab that it's on the floor under the table here. I just got a wall wart and this is, um, I tested it, it says 12 volt, but your standard 12 volt, you want about 13 and a half volts. This one was right about there. And this is nice, this is one of the newer ones. This, it's big, just to make it, you know, look nice, but um, this is the newer energy, more energy efficient. It doesn't have the transformer in it. It's all solid state stuff. Uh, well, I guess transformer solid state too, but uh, yeah, it doesn't use a transformer. And this works really nice. And um, once again, like I said, being 12 volts, you could put a potentiometer on here and limit how bright it is. And then for the power plug, I just had to uh, found a plug that correspond to my power supply. The hole where the power cord went through was just a little too big. So I simply just put a washer on each side. I had some old used washers found one and had a little bit of a patina to it so it blends in. I'm not planning on painting this lamp. You could. I am going to be using it in the garage and that's the main reason I switched it over to COB1. If it gets knocked over it's not breaking. And number two in the winter time when it's cold out there you have to hold this down a long time and sometimes you got to do it multiple times. This when it's cold it's still going to turn on and this will be on my one workbench out there and I do paperwork and stuff on so all right um I can't really think of anything else to go over I don't think I need to you know do a wiring schematic it's pretty simple and your positive goes to the positive negative goes to the negative and then I ran the positive through the switch and that's all there is to it simple wiring um, just be careful if you don't use this 12 volt uh, you know, if you use one that gets hotter, you could start a fire. And I'd still be careful, even if you do do this, be um, careful when you first try it out. Make sure there's nothing wrong with it. You know, you can touch the top and it's not burning your hand, you know. Like you could crack an egg on there and cook it. That wouldn't be good. But this one, I've tested it out. And I still, um, I'm not going to, you know, leave it on and leave that's not going to happen and I'm also going to be doing another video here coming up I'm going to make this so instead of having to use the push button I'll still have it on there but you'll be able to walk up and just tap it I'm going to put a capacitive touch sensor in here and it'll turn it off and on just by touching it here touching it here anywhere wherever you touch it it'll make it turn on so make sure to subscribe um, so you can see that video and when it's done I'll try to remember to put a link in the description below so with that um, well, have fun converting your old lamp um, over to a COB LED. Um, and like I said, most of these desk lamps were fluorescent tubed, but I have seen a few that had small, longer incandescence. It don't matter as uh, long as you can get the COB mounted in there, it'll work. So, all right, have a great day. And uh, well, remember, have fun building.